Welcome to the CCC News Podcast. Um, I'm joined here today by reporter Tom Peterson. Tom has been a bit on a bit of an adventure lately. He is working on stories about the bond proposal to build a new high school in the Dalles. So he's been visiting different schools, looking for examples of safe and modern spaces. He's also been looking for the advantages and opportunities that come with a whole new facility. So Tom, tell us where you have been and what you've seen. Yeah. So I've been kind of on a 160 mile span here. I, uh, I started at San Barlow up at Gresham. Uh, they've just built a new school and they opened it about a year ago. And uh, then I've also gone to Hermiston and uh, checked out the Hermiston High School and uh, their annex and their career in uh, technology, uh, excuse me, and their career and technical education program. So yeah. Um, yeah, so started. Yeah, I started at San Barlow uh, in September, and uh, it was uh, absolutely uh, fascinating uh, to go down there and see what a modern school is like. Um, there were two things that really struck me about that school, and first was the security. Uh, you go in, and, and just even to get in, there's a double door, and I had to get buzzed in, and uh, and then the folks at the counter obviously, you know, made sure that uh, I was the right person. The principal then met me, and um, and and then. It, it, every door in that school has a lockdown ability. Um, it, it actually, by the end of the tour, uh, Principal Jason Bear was able to show me three buttons just outside his door where he could lock down the entire school. And that could be from an intruder coming from the outside or, uh, or people or being able to lock the school down if there was actually somebody inside the building. Um, it provided a ton of security, something that um, I've not seen at the Dallas School. I know you've taken tours recently and um, they have a manual way of locking things down uh, where it, it is I think 23 doors uh, that they have to lock down in the event that they have a, a someone in the school that should not be there and uh, the, the Barlow School was just uh, amazing in that you could push a button, you could activate the strobe lights, automatically call the police, um, lock all the doors, and, uh, and start sending messaging out over the intercom on what people should do. It just provided a whole level of safety that I've never seen before. It was really, really astonishing program or, or, or really astonishing technology that they had. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's that sounds incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I know my experience as a person who went to the Dallas High School during lockdowns. I was always just kind of looking at those flimsy doors and all the windows, like, um, okay, if someone wants to get in here, you know. Uh, not that I want to put that in any parent's mind, but I can definitely see the benefits of having just three buttons you push, lock down a school. Yeah. I think there's a lot of peace of mind in that. Yeah. Um, so how about the interior of the school? What, what was that like? Yeah, so um, the first thing you notice is all this natural light. It's it's great. So you come in through the foyer, and then they've got um, you know uh, windows up towards the top of the the second floor, and all this light shining in. And then the second thing you notice is all this room in the hallways. Um, you know, as students uh, broke between classes, there was just plenty of room to get in between, and they had these incredible common spaces. Um, there were, uh, you know, um, standing bars and that kind of thing where you could sit and do your homework or have a beverage in between classes. There was also a stairway kind of built into the, uh, the walls there. And it was uh, kind of a, on, a, on, a, on a corner so that kids could sit on either side. They could have a snack or a beverage or whatever in between classes, co-mingle, talk about, you know, what's going on that day, maybe that evening. But it just seemed like it really upped the social aspect of the high school. Um, and and it, just, it just really flowed well. Uh, and then on top of that, um, they, they did something really smart there. They built a really big courtyard that opens from the interior of the school into the center. And so this is, you know, open air uh, courtyard where all the kids, you know, like on the day that I was there, it was great. They were having an ice cream social. And so the student body had all set up and they were handing out ice creams and, and doing that kind of thing. And, and kids got to be outside and yet they were safe within the school. 
and it was just this really great, great uh, dynamic that was going on there. And it was a beautiful day, so <laughs> that didn't hurt. Yeah, me. ice cream day is always everyone's favorite day at school. I have to say, it was always my favorite day. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. All right, so tell us a little bit more. Um, where else have you been? So you went to uh, to the Gresham School, but you've, you've also been to uh, one other place. Where uh, Can you remind me where that was? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, I went uh, 80 miles east up to Hermiston. And uh, Hermiston um, has a pretty good career and technical education program, and I was really interested in that. So I got in touch with the coordinator, uh, uh, Roger Bergen. And uh, he took me through the whole school. And uh, I was thinking, you know, 45 minutes, an hour. Well, I was there about two and a half hours because they have an expansive program with 11 different uh, focus areas um, from education to engineering, computer science. Uh, they offered a ton of ag. Um, they have Future Farmers of America. So you could both learn about plants or animals, um, greenhouses. I mean, it was just, it, what was so incredible about it was how well equipped that building was with, with these modern machines like uh, uh, 3D printers and uh, um, machines you could do embroidery with so that you could do your school logo on a hoodie. Um, there, there was just so many amazing features to that program, and I'm, I'm kind of jumbling it all up there, but what I'm trying to give you a sense of is, is the opportunity that students have at that school. It was just, uh, for me, I mean, uh, and I grew up in the, the 80s, you know, and when we had like a journalism program and some things like that, but nothing like this where um, it was it was completely uh, uh, updated but but they had the all the computers and everything to go with it um, uh, let me let me just take you into a, a, a for example um, so like say uh, in the, um, the the business program um, they had uh, uh, programs in accounting um, in marketing graphic arts um, and in addition they ran things like a school store of course most most high schools do that well they had a coffee shop and uh, beyond that they had students in charge of concessions so uh, you would have the football games and uh, basketball games and they would put specific students in charge of this they would they would come up through the program and uh, say you say you work in the coffee shop the first year and then uh, maybe you you're in computer science there's another program they had and you write some code that can help display the uh, the menu items for the um, the coffee shop um, and as as you grow to learn more and more about that business well they might bring you up to the position of being uh, say an accountant or a manager of that business so say in your senior year uh, you you may be doing um, doing the, the the head job running a coffee shop um, and and that means you know like QuickBooks and Excel and all of these uh, all these programs that you know later on in life or now you know as a student I mean a, a young kid coming out of school would, would have a really good grasp of these concepts and what it means to open your own business yeah wow yeah. that's that's really impressive um, I think I would have loved to have some QuickBooks knowledge prior than being pushed in uh, and into into business. So yeah. that's great. Um, tell me, tell me about what 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 was your experience in the Dallas High School? Did you did you have career programs or? And what know, year did you graduate? Two thousand. I graduated two thousand nine. Okay. And. really proud of this community i wanted to start saying that first i think we we've done a lot with what we have um and i'm proud to have come from the dells high school but i will say that i do not think it prepared me for mm -hmm. the world um i don't think i had career training that was adequate uh I had to learn a lot of things the hard way just out in, in real life. Um, the program that I did go through, I think my senior year, basically it was very much an on-your-own kind of project where you're supposed to research your, uh, your career of choice and you write all these essays about it and stuff. And then some people if would do job shadows and stuff. But it was, and you were required to do all this in order to graduate, but it wasn't... It wasn't a hands-on experience. 
Right. Okay. And that's, you know, that's always where I came down in high school is I, I really, the rubber did not hit the road for me until I got in and I got into a journalism class, well, strangely enough, right? But, but I actually got to go and do the things. And, you know, that's what Roger Bergen told me at, at Hermiston High School is like, you know, it's for all those kids who ask, why are we doing this? There is no why because you're doing it. And it's a real thing that is needed in, in the day to day life at the high school. I mean, they, it's crazy. In the, in the plant classes, they, they do floral arrangements. They made corsages for homecoming and sold them to the students. Um, <laughs> wow. Like, I, and there's another really cool program. Um, about 10 years ago, they went out for this revitalization grant, and it funded uh, a, house, a, house, a house building program. So essentially, they have, they have a construction uh, career um, that the kids can go through from entry level to one, two, three. And in their senior year, they can actually go out and build a new house. And so the Hermiston was in a good place. They had some extra property. And uh, they have a whole block over there on Ninth Street where the students have built houses during the past 10 years. A house per year. And they've been selling them. And they're nice houses. Like, they're beautifully done. They have brick uh, facades. And uh, they're high-end houses. Three-car garages. um, Back and front fireplaces. And... uh, uh, it, it was just uh, amazing to me, and uh, you know, I was talking with the, the, the gentleman who runs that program, Kurt Bergen, and uh, he said, essentially, you know, if kids do well in that program, you can get them a job straight out of high school. And they just go straight to work, and uh, and at the same time, they're addressing their housing issue. They have the same kind of housing issues we have here, so uh, just kind of a a really neat combination and, and good partnership they have going over there. And they just roll the money forward. They build a house, put the neck the money in, and sell it. Um, put it into the next house. They actually, the last last year, they sold their house. I think for five hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. So I mean, this is a big. You know, this is real life. <laughs> wow. This is, kids are really getting a solid, solid feel for what you know this business is like. And you know, I, I don't know how many times I've said this in my life, but boy, if you if you can go out and do a job before you invest all the time into the education and it takes to to get to that point, uh, you're just way ahead because you're going to know if you like it or not before you've spent all that time on something that uh, you're just so-so on or maybe it's not that fulfilling or it doesn't hit that purpose for you. So I, boy, I just commend those guys out there and I I just really think, you know, um, I, I know the the, the administrators and the educators here are looking looking for that. I mean, they do have a good a good start on uh, career and technical education. I, I believe they are offering uh, multiple programs, auto shop and culinary and and multiple other things. Um, but I do know they said that they were out of room. And uh, with the new facility, a new Dallas High School, these are some of the things that you know maybe could be introduced and uh, and uh, give kids opportunity because that's what this is about and you know i mean what what better prepares you for the real world than um going out and and doing these things you know and and having real life experiences that are absolutely applicable the day you graduate i mean i just i was really really impressed with what hermiston had going and uh you know they're a town of nineteen thousand. the dallas is fifteen thousand. um i know their rate per thousand up there is like three point Three dollars and sixty-five cents per thousand. I think this bond's asking for uh, two dollars and seventy-three cents, seventy-four cents, somewhere somewhere right in there. So I mean, you know, the, I, I, it just it just shows you what can be done if the community puts their puts their best foot forward. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, it sounds like you really had a had a big impression on you. Um, and I would say I think we have some programming like that available at our current high school as far as like the building houses and stuff. I know there's a really great program with that. But a new facility really does give the opportunity to expand what we can offer and prepare our kids for. Um, to, but to that to that point too, Cole. Uh, these these classrooms that I was going through, like say the engineering room, it was a fifty by fifty. It was a twenty five hundred square foot room, but that serves a major purpose because they have to break out and build things in that room. And so the desks, you know, everybody has their computer and great and everything, but then they have these big wide areas where everybody can get together and do some work. So, like that kind of planning that could go into this new building really 
uh, really uh, escalates the education. It, it provides the space where kids can learn. And that is, I know, what the Dallas High School currently is lacking. And it's got these lot of cut-up classrooms. It's just not the same. Yeah, they're small. Yeah. Um, I think... Uh, last year, I did a article about the ADA accessibility of the school and the smallness of the doorways and the classrooms is a big issue for anyone who needs a wheelchair or even just a knee scooter. Um, but kind of kind of bringing it in a little bit, you mentioned about the the cost. Mm. So this all costs money, right. uh, and the bond for a new high school in the Dells is asking 140 million. That has some local voters asking questions about the cost. So, CCC News recently received a letter from Chet Peterson questioning the $718 per square foot to cost to construct a new high school. Uh, Peterson states that other schools, such as the new Bend High School, run at about a $500 per square foot rate. He states that the cost of the new high school is overpriced by about $60 million. Hmm. Wow, that's uh, that's that's quite a number, and um, uh, we're here to address that concern. Uh, I, I kind of just did uh, some quick, quick fact checking on my own, and some of these numbers didn't quite uh, come out to to the same same numbers there. But um, and so looking at this, uh, we have invited in Robin Denning. Uh, Robin Denning is the president of the uh, Say Yes TDHS Political Action Committee, which is uh, running uh, a positive. Uh, election for this bond and uh, Robin's had a chance to take a look at uh, at Chet's numbers here and uh, Robin has uh, done some some research and we're going to hear from Robin a little bit about um, uh, where these costs are at and, and, and what's really kind of right in regards to costing out a per square foot on a building. So Robin, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So uh, you see, I, I think I sent a letter to you, uh, or Chet's letter to you, and you've had a chance to take a look at it. And um, is is are we getting the whole picture here? Or are we missing some vital, maybe some vital information? I know it's easy to kind of confuse these things because school bonds are not a simple, a simple thing. There are, are a lot of moving parts. So maybe you can help us understand this a little better. Yeah, sure, I'd be delighted to. Thanks for the opportunity to kind of work through it with you, both of you. I really appreciate that, um, and everyone that's listening, of course. Um, so, firstly, let's talk about the numbers. So, 140 million is actually three different projects. The first one is a is a high school with all these with CTE programs, um, more traditional ones like English, maths, and science, like common spaces, safe, accessible school with these security measures that you talk of at Gresham and at Hermiston, mm. um, eating spaces for all the students in the school and like the current school that we have in the Dalles. So 140 million. So the 120, it's actually 100, uh, 128.9 million will go onto the school. I'm just going to pull my uh, computer up, make sure I've got the right number. 128.9 million. Um, and let's talk about what that encompasses. So when we talk about a square price per square foot in a, in a residential or a commercial building, it's usually an empty building once we're finished building. You know, there are no there are, there are no kitchen cabinets, there's no like soft furniture, there's no couches, there's no tables, there's no boards on the walls, there's no uh, equipment for in the in the tool shed for instance. It's just an empty garage, right? For your square foot price. This square foot price that we're referring to is Actually includes all of those what they refer to as soft costs as well um, hard costs and the soft costs right so there's okay. there's both of those things so um, the architects break these down as soft costs and hard costs and some of those uh, those soft costs are like design and engineering and working with lawyers and working with um, and paying fees to the te to the SDC fees for connection and and electricity fees and like all those other kinds of things and then those other costs are more specific tangible assets like uh, like chairs and tables okay. and whiteboards and CCTV cameras and door locks and door handles and other kind and um, um, specialty floors for the gym specialty mm -hmm. floors floors in the performance spaces you've got like a like a theater in there you know that's got this so all the lighting and all that and all that lighting okay. and the rig that's and stuff all included in that yeah okay. this is like turnkey price so it's all this stuff is included um so then we've got cte spaces like wood shop like like construction like 
yeah. like three D three D design, like um, um, like some of the ones you mentioned for Hermiston. Mm -hmm. That's I mean that's one of the biggest reasons, as you kind of mentioned before, we're going for this. This or it, it is a is such a need for our community is that the capacity of the high school isn't just about how many students can you fit in there. It's also about how how are they enabled to learn in those spaces and as we found out on our on our tour of the high school it wasn't that the, there was not enough that there, there, there isn't category enough space for all the students but they've also run out of space for more programming so okay. so we can't add any more programs we can't change the programs as things change you know there's const a construction project program like that that's pretty new like that's a pretty new idea I love that you know but in the DAOs we couldn't even consider that because it's not because we don't have the will or the funding or we don't have access to those grants because we do it's just a matter of actually having the building space to to teach those foundational skills to those students and put them in the scenario where they can build a house. Yeah, and in Hermiston that was a majorly, it was a huge space within the building and it, it was two stories, you know. I mean, because they're building things inside there. You can't just do it at a single a single uh, story and, and so, I, yeah, that makes absolute sense and the, and the footprint at the Dallas doesn't allow for that. Yeah, it's it just, just doesn't. Not, the space does not exist. Um, um, Robin, can you run us through the costs for the school bond real quick? Yeah, sure. I'd be glad, delighted to. So the first, the big one, the big chunk is uh, a new safe and accessible high school on Hostetler Way West. Um, this high school is for 950 students and is all inclusive in its package. So it really includes the security systems, the educational tools, the whiteboards, and that's 128.9 million for that project. Um, so um, for per price per square foot of that building would be $509.42. Oh, well that's almost spot on with what Mr. Peterson told us in this letter. Yeah, and that number in Bend is actually, it uh, doesn't include the soft costs of those educational tools. That Bend number was actually just a completely blank and open and, and blank um, building. It didn't actually include the educational tools that this bond and price does. So the second two prices that we need to be aware of is the, is the demolition of Watonka School um, uh, on uh, and the, with a replacement of new athletic and practice facilities. Um, this is really good for our community because it's because it's uh, all year round, it's not grass, and it's we have a really sh a big shortage of, of quality sports spaces, and so this is really going to benefit loads of different families on loads of different fronts. Finally, the most interesting one, in my opinion, is the, east, is the repairs on the, the East 10th Street School, the, um, the current high school that we have. This includes a million dollars of electrical upgrades, a two million dollars of ADA accessibility improvements, and another 2.4 million dollars of roof repairs. Um, and this is really focused on continuing to use that building, making sure it's relevant in our community, and relevant in our educational system, um, and thinking as we move into the future and as we're thinking about adding more H HVAC controlled spaces to that building, it's really going to need those electrical upgrades in order to do that. Yeah, it has such a legacy for the community as well. Yeah. I mean, so many, so many memories in those halls. Um, I know a lot of people want to preserve the memory, but they definitely want to see it made into a safe space. So yeah. And now let me address the square per square foot cost, which I know is an important. Um, well, input. let's. Yeah. Let, can we get a quick recap there? So yeah. so let's go back to the top there. So um, the high school is 128.9 million, and then we've got another 13.5 million for the Wilatonka demolition and athletic. Fields, and then another 5.4 million for the uh, 10th Street High School repairs and upgrades. So, so let, let's let's be clear here. Then, you, what you're saying is this bond will also be paying for those architectural and design costs as well. Yes. Um, so, okay, so, so we're getting everything in this price. We're not like we're not we're not just seeing a portion of the cost. We're seeing the overall total cost of what it's really going to be for the, the Dallas, a new Dallas high school. Yes, and it's, you know, that it's, so when we break it down like that, the building just when you take just the building, yes. and you take all of those architect costs and all of those design costs out, it actually comes out of five hundred and nine dollars a square foot. Yeah. Okay. So what? Where does that bring us? What's What's the grand total then uh, after going through all that? So the grand total will be one hundred and forty-eight point seven million. Okay. 
Uh, sorry, 147.8 million. Gotcha. Thanks. Yes. Um, so that, as you've picked up, there's a there's the ask on the bond ask is 140 million. So there is a bit of a funding gap. Okay. The small funding gap um, has been 400, four million dollars has been filled with a, um, with a with an ODE grant. Oh, of the state's going to kick in four million. Yeah, and Great. we didn't actually qualify Great. for that one in 2018 when the last bond, but we do for this one because the school district followed all the steps they needed to do, which was that facilities condition assessment and index and all of the strategic planning that needed to happen to, to be connected with that. And then there's a 3.8 million dollar funding gap. Um, there is some money connected to Google to, to the Google projects that could fill that gap, and they're also looking to fill that gap with other grants and other um, extra um, um, monies from the state and things like that. So it's two dollars and seventy four cents on each one thousand dollars of assessed value property value. Yes, yeah, so there's a difference between the the value you take to the real estate agent and the value you take to the assessor, and it's the assessor's value. So if you're confused with that, you can go to the Wesco County Assessor's website and you can figure, you can literally get your numbers from there. Um, the average tax assessed value of a property in the Dows is 222000 um, and so the average repayment for this on, on this will be $50 a month um, for, for those folks at that 222,000 um, so yeah um, you can figure out if you've, you can go to our website votestdhs.org and we have a calculator in there and it can estimate your exact charge on that if you'd like to the extra clarification you, the one thing I haven't heard explained yet is how this price was arrived at so we're talking about the market we obviously know it costs to buy things. We all understand how money works. Um, but can you tell us about the actual process? So this isn't just like somebody wrote this number down on a piece of paper. My understanding is that it took, it took months to come up with this number. It was a big group of community members who were invested in this that helped decide on this number. Yeah, so that group of 60 was intended to meet for three times. They actually ended up meeting five times because they were so invested. Those Opsis, the op, the firm that they that that was working with us was called Opsis, which have built schools in Portland and Eugene and Bend mm -hmm. and Hermiston and Gresham. Yeah, they've all, done a ton of projects. Yeah, yeah. Washington, Oregon, mm -hmm. across the region. Um, and they came up with a 22-page costing document that kind of laid down some of the costs and the expected inflation of those costs and started to build these really big lists of what everything would pay for. And then as we kind of got to the end of that process with the community advisory committee, we, excuse me, we, um, we looked at the costs of each thing. This community advisory committee came up with three, um, worked and eventually kind of delivered what they what they um, had studied through the uh, through a PR firm, public relations firm called Jeremy Wright PR, who then took what we made and polled with it. And so we called 400 different families in in the Dalles and 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 asked them questions around what their price sensitivity was, whether the high school was the right project for them, whether they what, whether they had a different price sensitivity, whether it was ADA accessibility or whether it was safety, whether it was about CTE or whether it was about science and college boundness, you know, what, and really ask some of these questions. And those results show that the, the $140 million was about the cap of our price sensitivity in the Dow's. It, it, it kind of fit in line with what the Dow's asked and said that it needed through the Community Advisory Committee. And of, of all the packages that were presented, 140 met the needs of the students, it met the needs of the teachers, and it met the needs of the community. And that's and it's really was going to propel the community forwards into a, a future that where our students really get their needs needs met and our students really feel cared for. Really, our students are coming out of that school experience with those options that we talk of, with those abilities to go and get a job doing what they want to do, and not the own not the only route being more education, you know? Like it really, the $140 million package really resonated with one. Right, right, and, and so I, I really appreciate that the, uh, the upfront total cost 
is being is 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 the number that uh, the the PAC and uh, educators are excuse me the PAC and and and, and uh, other other folks are are putting out there because I mean that's that's essential in knowing what you're going to pay long term and um, it's a thirty year bond and uh, I think I think did, did I have it right two dollars and seventy yeah two dollars and seventy three cents per yeah per thousand per thousand of assessed value okay. yeah. So that's, that's fascinating. So when I was up at Hermiston, I looked at what their current uh, bond rates are, and it's three dollars and sixty-five cents. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it was funny when I when I got done uh, interviewing uh, the kids and, and uh, some of the instructors up there, um, the the, uh, the coordinator for the uh, career and technical education program, uh, Roger Burden, he he said he, he looked at me. He said, "Do you think these kids think we care?" And uh, his point was, absolutely they do. It's a clean, beautiful space with all these different opportunities. And uh, these kids know they're cared for. And, uh, and it shows. And it shows in their behavior and, uh, and uh, their willingness to, uh, to get to class and get the work done. And it was, it was, uh, it was evident. It, it, That's powerful. Yeah. Certainly. That's very profound that um, it's one thing to be told that you're cared about. And it's another thing to feel it and to see it in action, certainly. Yeah. How will these new facilities create a more inclusive environment for our students? Such a great question. I love that. Um, there's a really, there's an easy answer. And then when we incorporate the newly, um, the newly adopted Senate Bill 819, it gets very, very complicated. So let me give me the easy answer. So in in our right now, in the cafeteria, in the chat and chew situation, we have this division by economy, right? So the students that are on free and reduced lunch go one place, and those that got $5 in their pocket from mom and dad go somewhere else, right? And so we foundationally and structurally create this economic divide, not by teacher didn't do that. You know, administrator didn't do that. Just the building did that, right? Mm. Just the way the building is laid out, the way that the building operates, and the, the, the state programs that it's connected to decided that for us, right? And so it's, it's so, Im so and, and it does that across the board. You know, that's, that's just it's a really small, easy one. Hmm. It's a bit complicated, but... I mean, that makes sense to me. During my ADA article that I wrote earlier this year, um, the students were losing not just a little bit of time, hours and hours, days worth of time in a year. Yeah. That is a lot of lost learning time. It is. And when we plan that in to that student's day, we're planning in inequity. Yeah, finally, I guess I'm going to just finish my piece on, you know, the need for safety in schools you know when we when we built the school in 1941 in the Dalles and in across the world we weren't facing the same threats to school that we are now um, but it's twofold in my opinion there's the reality of the threat that exists but there's also the feeling of safety you know as many people will know including myself we, we don't sleeping is tricky if we don't feel safe right working is tricky if we don't feel safe eating is tricky if we don't feel safe studying is hard at the best of times yes you know studying is hard even when we're feeling good and but the feeling of safety is worth buying for our students, right? Because it's, it's not just one day or a week or a month. You know, we're talking about, you know, seven years of mm -hmm. feel, six, maybe six years of feeling safe or not feeling safe. That safe feeling of safety has very real outcomes for those children, for those teachers, and for their parents. Because if they can go to school and their parents, firstly start with their parents, if those, their children go to school and they can sign off knowing their children safe knowing the children are there and not at somewhere else buying some food but they're there at school that's a value in itself right that value exists like as a student if that student can just completely forget about what they've seen on the news in the last three days and just focus on their studying that's a value like that is a value to us as a community and it's important that we take that value into account right not just the reality of the safety but the feeling of safety is worth buying you know it's like buying a bulletproof car or 
I mean, I'm not not that I can afford a bulletproof car. <laughs> yeah, I've seen them. They're very nice, but they're they're diplomat price only. <laughs> yeah, so maybe that's a bad example, but it's worth having, right? A safe environment is worth investing in. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on today's podcast, Tom and Robin. I really appreciate your insights into this issue. Um, If you like this podcast, find us wherever you get your podcasts. Until next time, this is Cole Goodwin signing off.